Welcome Kingdom citizens, loyal followers, and clients. Today we're going to be looking at debt snowball versus debt avalanche versus cash flow index versus velocity banking. Which one will come out on top for this specific live case study that I have on the board? So without any further ado, let's direct our attention to the whiteboard. To give you some context, here are the four major numbers. We have income at $7,865.37 per month. Total expenses, $7,365.37. Total debt over 300K. We're fluctuating as low as $500 a month in cash flow. Could be upwards of 800 and up. All right, so it could be a little over 800 and up. This person has a business. I'm dealing with a husband. So this is all of his income that we're dealing with. We have a personal line of credit, unsecured, revolving, calculated, simple interest at a bank. $8,000 is the credit limit. 14% is the interest rate. Over here, you're going to see all of the debts broken down. So if you were to add up all of these debts, you should get that number 311K. So we have a bunch of different credit card debts. We've got personal loans, we've got car loans, and we got a mortgage, right? So that is the full debt breakdown, right? The situation at hand, which is why I titled the video Debt Snowball versus Debt Avalanche versus Cash Flow Index versus Velocity Banking, is we're trying to determine what is the most effective efficient use of a lump sum of money that is coming into his economy right so this is a live situation real life situation where you may have gone through this before where you've had a lump sum of cash come in from either a retirement account life insurance right a tax-free payout an inheritance money from a trust money from the sell of a business, a real estate transaction, whatever it may be, we're just gonna title it lump sum, right? And a lot of you might be struggling with, okay, what do I do with this money? How do I break it down? Do I throw X amount towards debt? Okay, then how much? And then which debts do I throw at, right? So we're gonna figure that out based on the most popular debt elimination strategies. Now, one of those strategies, cash flow index, is something that is still new to me but I've technically been doing it without even knowing for the longest period of time. And the reason why I know it is because of the results that I've been getting and how it's been matching. So in this video, I'm going to explain cash flow index simply because I've never really taught it on my YouTube channel to you guys. And I think the cash flow index formula is going to be a phenomenal addition for those of you who are practicing the velocity banking and or infinite banking concept to eliminate debt offset interest. So cash flow index formula is simply taking the loan balance, however much you owe on a debt and dividing it by the number, by the uh, minimum monthly required payment on that debt, right? So we have a $10,000 debt and it's costing you hundred dollars a month. You would take 10,000 divided by the hundred. You're going to get a number. If that number is below 50, then that is going to be a very effective debt to go after. If it is above 50, we may want to put it on the back end, leave it alone, right? Or pay that off last, right? So the cash flow index is ignoring the interest rate on a debt. It is simply focusing on cash flow recovery, which blew my mind because I'm like, oh, wait a minute. In velocity banking, that's our primary concern is usually cash flow first, interest cost, interest rate second, and then balance third. In the debt snowball strategy, it's balance first. Whatever the lowest balance is, regardless of the monthly payment, regardless of the interest rate, that's the one you tackle first, right? And then you work your way up. Debt avalanche is regardless of whatever the balance owed is, regardless of whatever the monthly payment is, you're focusing on the interest rate. Whatever the highest interest rate debt you have, that's the one you tackle first and then you keep going, right? So if you have a 29%, 25%, 22%, 18, 17, all the way down, you would go in that, that order. So we're going to be breaking that all of that down in this video, give you the numbers, 
and I want you to hold me accountable. I want you to run the numbers, right? Take the video slowly, pause it where you have to, write the numbers out, all of that. Let's have some fun. Let's direct our attention back to the board. So four major numbers. We have our debt tool. We have $36,500 coming into our economy, new money. This is money that's already been taxed. So we don't have to set aside money for taxes. It's just 36.5 straight up in 2023 coming to us. I have a personal rule that my client is going to implement. Of the 36,500, I personally, whenever I get a lump sum of money, I take 10 to 20% off the top out of my economy in the form of saving and giving. So I save 10%, give 10%, right? Just boom, act like I don't even have it. So that number would be anywhere based off 36,500 would be anywhere between 30, 650 and 7,300. Okay. Together, this client and I, we came up with a number. We settled around 29,500 is the number that we're going to use to eliminate debt. Okay. The financial goal of the client, not Denzel, not any other guru, not any other, you know, influencers advice on what to do with your finances. The goal of the client is wants to eliminate debt. Denzel, I want to eliminate debt. That is their goal. That is what we're going to solve for based on the 29.5. In addition, we want to rebuild credit and they want to apply for a HELOC simply because they can get a much higher credit limit and a lower interest rate based on the current debt tool that they have, right? So that is the context. Here's the debt breakdown. I have the name of the debt, like what it is. This is what's owed. These are the monthly payments. These are the interest rates on the debt. Whenever you see a debt that doesn't have an interest rate, means that there the means that the interest is already built into the balance itself. So there's no added on interest. It's just 300 every time a payment goes, it'll bring down that 1,752.86 by $300. Right. So over here is the breakdown based on each debt elimination strategy in terms of which ones we're going to pay off first, right? According to the strategy. So cash flow index, I, I numbered each debt, right? So starting with, you know, one being here, go all the way down and then you'll end up over here, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? All the way to like, I think there's 20 or so debts on here. There's a lot of debts on here, right? So according to the cash flow index, these are the debts that you would pay off. According to debt snowball, these are the debts that you would pay off, right? And I went in order by least debt to greatest debt. So according to debt snowball, we're going to start with debt snowball being the first strategy that we would map out. Reason why I do that and you guys, most of you guys know this, who are clients, followers of mine for a while, is we're using debt snowball as our measurement stick. It is the easiest, simplest debt elimination strategy in the marketplace today, debt snowball. You're just simply ignoring the interest rate. You're ignoring the monthly payment. You're just looking at the balance. It's a good way to kind of formulate and, and write out all your debts, just like I did here, smallest to greatest, so you can see what you're working with, right? Not, not bad at all. So what we're doing is, 29,500 is our number. So what we're trying to figure out is the how much debt can I eliminate, right? With the 29,500, the result being what would be the most amount of cash flow that I would recover. Whoever recovers the most amount of cash flow wins, right? If that's how you would measure all the different debt elimination strategies out there, that's how you want to measure it is which one gets us the most cash flow for our dollar right Twenty nine thousand five hundred. if you were to do that snowball we would be able to pay off a total of 13 debts right so from one all the way down to 13 so every debt on this aisle right here in this column everything would get paid off if you were to add up all the numbers you should get twenty six thousand three hundred eighty four dollars and twenty eight cents Okay, if you're wondering, hey, shouldn't you use the whole 29.5? Yes, absolutely. But we can't use 29.5 and pay off the next debt, right? So if we're at 26,384.28, the next smallest debt would be this one right here, the 4,599.44, right? So what I wrote over here is the amount of money that would be left over, 3,115.72. So in simple 
terms here, that 3000 would get applied here, but there isn't a cash flow recovery. Does that make sense? So we're not going to count it, but just know that that's what you would do. If you were doing that snowball, you'd be able to pay off 13 debts. And then what's left over would get applied towards the next smallest debt plus whatever cash flow you have on hand. Boom. But we're not going to count that because it would breach 29,500. So it would be over that amount. Okay. Moving along to debt snowball, uh, debt avalanche, I'm sorry. If you were to do debt avalanche, that's another measurement stick, you're looking at the highest interest rate. So you're gonna ignore all of these numbers, right? You're just looking at interest rates, interest rates, interest rates, okay? What's the highest interest rates out of all these debts? We got 29.99, 29.99. So what I did, you might see it uh, with my camera, I wrote these little dots right here. All right. And then you can follow with me on the numbers. According to debt avalanche, these would be the debts that you would wipe out. That's one through six, the eighth debt right here, the 11th, 11 through 13, 11, 12, 13, and then 14 and 16. If you add up those numbers, you should get $29,038.40, much closer to 29.5. So you kind of use most of all the capital, 29.5. But look what happened you would only get a cash flow of $1,124. So if you were comparing debt avalanche to debt snowball, debt snowball wins with less money being applied to debt, you get a cash flow recovery of $1,464.57, okay? Now, my personal opinion here as it relates to debt avalanche, almost all of the time that I run real numbers, not fake examples like you see on the internet oftentimes. No shots fired, by the way, no shots fired. Just there's a lot of fake examples, unrealistic, like give me real numbers, real numbers, real situations. Then we can have a, a better conversation to compare. When I'm working with hundreds of clients, more often than not, that avalanche consistently loses, right? More often than not. I'm not saying that avalanche doesn't ever win. I'm pretty sure it does. But when we're talking about simplicity, effectiveness, and really just kind of overall ratio, if we're looking at cash flow as our measurement stick, cash flow, if you're looking at interest recovery, there might be an argument there in terms of how much interest you're saving. But if I'm recovering more cash flow, whoever has more cash flow goes faster. There's no argument there. If I have more cash flow than you, I'm going to go faster at no matter what debt I apply towards. I'm going to go faster than you, right? And then you mix that with an actual strategy. Oh my goodness. You got a nice recipe there. So with that snowball, you're getting a $1,464.50 only on 26,000. That other 3,000 applied to that credit card, right? You, if you were to factor that in, that's you know even better, right? You're even in an even better position as you keep moving forward, eliminating your debt. That avalanche, 29,000 only gets me $1,124. I only have $461.60 left to apply towards whatever the next highest interest rate debt would be. And I believe it would be this one, 24%. No, it'd be right here. It'd be 25.49%. That would be the next debt that you would apply towards. And there's no cash flow gain from that. Okay. Velocity banking, 29,000. $311.90 gets me $1,783.39. When you're doing velocity banking, again, we're looking at cash flow recovery first, right? So if you look over here, velocity banking debts, we're wiping out one through seven. The beautiful thing with velocity banking is it's incorporating all four concepts as one. It's embracing the best of everything, right? It's factoring in interest offset, interest recovery. It's factoring in cash flow with cash flow index. It's factoring in balance with debt snowball. It's factoring it all in. And I think that is a very, very unique way of going about your finances, especially in the 21st century, especially with the amount of noise that you're getting all day long. I don't think it hurts to factor everything in, especially with your, how you personally operate, you, you're measuring, right? You're measuring, you're, you're, you're looking at the logic of it, the emotional side of it, we're factoring it all. So you'll notice how the first seven debts we tackle, okay? Debt number 10, right? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of the underlined debts that you see are the ones that are being applied for velocity banking. So we got debt number 10, debt 14, 15, 17. If you add up all of the 
cash flow, right? You should get 1783.39, you should get 29,311.90 with only $188.10 to spare, right? Towards the next most attractive debt. There's another factor in velocity banking that we're not even including in here that would just blow all of these strategies out the water, right? I'm not going to include it, but I am going to mention it a little later. Moving on with cash flow index. In my opinion, cash flow index technically wins. Actually, velocity banking technically wins because of the cash flow gain. But look how tight the number is. And here's where I feel like personally I've been doing cash flow index for a while, but I just didn't have a formula to make sense of what I was doing with velocity banking, right? So to be fully transparent with you, honest, straightforward, when I looked at all these debts with the client, if you're wondering, wait a minute, Denzel, how did you figure out what was your formula to figure out which debts to eliminate with velocity banking? What I always do is I start with the other strategies first. So I got 1464 here, 1124 and 1735. So all I'm doing is like a, is like a, uh, uh, I'm putting a little puzzle together. So all I'm doing is selecting, okay, let me do these seven and this one and that one and that one. Does it equal more than 1735.39? Nope, okay, let's do it again. So I keep doing it, keep doing it until I beat it. That's literally what I've done for probably tons and tons of clients. Now, there's no duplication in that. There's no like credibility in that, right? I personally believe I have a gift that God has given me where I can look at your debts and I just know I'm allowing I'm allowing Holy Spirit to work through me and Holy Spirit tells me which debts to tackle, right? Obviously, I'm incorporating a little logic, but I just want to be fully honest with you. When I when I wrote out all the debts after I looked at my competitors, right? Then I'm like, I go into prayer mode and I start selecting, selecting. And it only took me two tries. My first try when I was picking the different debts, I got a cash flow recovery of $1,710.39. So, so initially, cash flow index was beating me, right? Cash flow index was beating me by a couple bucks. So it was neck and neck. The one factor that cash flow index was telling me to not pay off was this card right here, the 40. Five ninety nine forty four hundred eighty five bucks. Originally, I was gonna pay off this debt right here, three thousand two forty six. Right, so I was originally here. Right, so let me pull the calculator out real quick so you can see this twenty nine thousand five hundred minus twenty seven thousand. Let me see twenty seven thousand nine fifty eight twenty seven thousand nine five eight point. Uh, 46 cents. Okay. This is where I was. 27,958.46 gave me a cash flow recovery of 1,710 bucks and some change. What I did was I said, okay, let me take, this was spirit led. So I was just looking through everything. I just took a guess. Boom. I took this one off. So this one I had originally paying off. So I minus it three, two, four, six. Boom. Then I added that one, four, five, nine, nine. 44 got me to 29,311.90, which gave me that higher cash flow. I was able to beat cash flow index. Now, again, that's not duplicatable. That's that's gift, skills, talents. That's relying on Holy Spirit. That's relying on other factors that simply don't make logical sense to the average viewer, which is where cash flow index is going to be a key tool that I'm going to start implementing, right? So here's how uh, cash flow index would work, right? And I'm going to take my notes here. And we're gonna go one by one just so you can understand i'll do an example so you can see how you would go about doing it with each and every one of these debts right so you would take starting with the smallest one you would take 280 57 and divide it by the monthly payment you're gonna get seven okay if you kept doing that for every single debt according to the cash flow index formula whichever one has the lowest number below 50 that's the one you'd pay off so according to cash flow index we have to pay off number one first then number two right and so i went in i went in order right of which debts to hit first but looking at my notes here it would be seven and debt number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Debt number ten on here would be has a cash flow index of twelve, right? So you just keep doing that over and over and over again. You write out all the numbers. Okay, this one got a seven, this one got an eighteen, this one got a, a twenty-one, this one got a thirty, this one had you know, a mortgage has over a hundred. So it's not a 
cash it's not a a, a cash flow that you want to go after cuz it's going to take too long right you wouldn't pay your mortgage off first when you have all these other debts that doesn't that it wouldn't be efficient it wouldn't make sense it would just be flat out wrong right it's okay to be wrong so that you can know how to pivot and go in the right direction there has to be a wrong way there has to be a right way right it has to be right so when you apply logic, the human error factor, we're putting all these things together, we're really able to get some good results here. I really enjoy this. So these are the different options here. As you can see, velocity banking does win, but not by much, right? An argument could be made where cash flow index could potentially beat velocity banking. I honestly think velocity banking and cash flow index should come together. And that's what I'm going to be teaching on this channel. That's what I'm going to be sharing a little bit more, much more now is talking about cash flow index because I think it's a formula that all of my clients, existing and new clients coming in, as well as loyal followers, we could be using cash flow index, especially for a situation like this, when you're dealing with a lump sum of cash, big bonus payout, inheritance, whatever it is, and you're like, okay, how do I best supply these funds, all right? With that being said, here is the last little feature with Velocity Banking that blows everything out the water, all right? So we know that if we apply $29,311.90, we get the highest cash flow recovery. We got $188.10 left over. The next debt that we would hit would actually be the PLOC, right? We would dump. So simultaneously, we're eliminating a bunch of debts like all the other strategies do, but we're getting the most amount of cash flow. And to make it even sweeter, we're going to recapture that 240 immediately, simultaneously paying down the debt, increasing the cash flow, and then redeploying that PLOC to the next debt that we want to hit because we're no longer dealing with any more capital available. Okay. Now, the money that we saved. 10 to 20% in this case, they're going to do, a, uh, I think it's like seven grand. That they're going to save. That's the case. Let's say they saved $7,000, right? Just save, not, not give anything. Just save seven grand. That 7,000 could get parked in their personal line of credit. With the other strategies, you can't do that, right? Not allowed to do that. You have to save the money in a savings account. In the Velocity Banking world, we're more than comfortable with parking our savings instead of in a savings account. We park it in a PLOC because we we recognize how a PLOC can function just like a savings can function just like a checking account. And with this person wanting to apply for a HELOC, it would make perfect sense for them to simply park their savings in the PLOC, make their credit look even better. We get the 240, we apply the 188 towards the PLOC, his income and cash flow towards the PLOC, that thing is done, zeroed out. So we get 240, that puts us even further ahead of everyone else, right? Then on top of that, we could redeploy the funds of the 8K again towards the next most attractive debt that we'd wanna go after, doing the same thing, right? So once we eliminate a certain amount of debts on the board, then we'll have just a few left. I'll do an updated video. Once the person actually does what we're mapping out here, I'm recording this video in February of 2023. So the, the client is receiving the money in February, 2023. They'll pay off the debts that we went over here using Velocity Banking and cash flow Index formula, paying off those debts. They'll do Velocity Banking. I'll do an update video. Here's where we're at, here's what's happened. And I, I'm just so excited to see what happens. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up comment below what you've been doing to eliminate debt that snowball that avalanche cash flow index formula velocity banking or more than likely if you're a client of mine we're doing a mix of everything we're bringing it all together because it doesn't hurt right i'm i'm taking all the different mindsets getting the best out of it and notice how we come out on top pretty awesome right so with that being said my name is denzel your personal finance geek of the 21st century big shout out to wealth nation they got me a gift so thank you carmen and darius appreciate you giving me a gift of these shirts wonderful branding love what you guys are doing can't wait to collaborate again on youtube and all the different platforms uh collaborate with our communities together I really look forward to that day. I love what you guys are doing on YouTube. You guys have grown tremendously, just a lot of progress. So uh, they've got wonderful shirts. If you want to buy a shirt, wealth is a mindset. The, the other one is own your lifestyle. So you'll probably see me wear these shirts. So I just want to give a big shout out to them. Love what they're doing. For those of you who want me to run your numbers on the whiteboard, just like this, you want to become a client of mine, click the link below in the description. I've got 
all different types of financial services and programs that you can invest in, pay for, and we get to work. Let's say you're zero cash flow. Let's say you're negative cash flow. Let's say you're in a tough financial situation. You simply cannot afford anyone in the marketplace. That's not an excuse. I have a church. I have a ministry of finance called the Finance Geek Ministry. You can sign up below as well. You'll see it. Finance Geek Ministry. You register for that. You can actually earn free one-to-one -one coaching with me by exchanging your social currency rather than your financial currency. I'm willing to exchange likes, subscribes, follows, comments, shares, testimonies, referrals. I'm willing to share that from your end in, the, in exchange for my time, expert financial coaching, guidance, counseling, and consulting to get your numbers in the right place so that you can invest in yourself, so that you can multiply, be fruitful, and have dominion, my friend. So that's what the Ministry of Finance is all about, helping you get to that next level. I've also got other coaches that I'm going to be announcing soon that also want to help, that also want to serve, you get to be a part of a huge community, and we get to have a lot of fun, and we get to do life together with God, with his presence in the kingdom. We get to do things with God, right, in the kingdom to perpetuate it here on planet Earth. It's an exciting experience, an exciting adventure. You're going to want to be a part of it. Click the links below. Take action. Let's have some fun. God bless. Talk soon.